Okay, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Oh, can you hear me? Good evening. Yeah, okay. Good evening, sir. Okay, right. Right now, uh, education philosophy. So this is our topic today, uh, education. So we have to go into detail what the education is. Uh, you know, exactly what is education? When you ask this question from yourself, it's somewhat difficult for you to answer. The main reason is Eastern as well as Western. So many educationists and philosophers have already forwarded, given, they have defined education in their own, you know, aspects, angles. So they have their own background of religion. They have their own background of culture and the societies. So once we look back, we just go for the Greek history, or Roman history, perhaps Indian history, and all. So, we are not uh, go that much, go into the, you know, detail in that much. There is a set syllabus for you people just to refer, to uh, go through and to have a rough idea what the education is and all. So according to this particular curriculum or the syllabus, so we have to, uh, we are, I'm ready to give you the main definitions where you probably might uh, face for the exam and all. Okay. So that is how we do the uh, Today's lecture. Now, education. It has been defined, analyzed in different ways. So now, Lester Smith. Education is a useless way of passing the time. 
you know, the, these definitions are a little bit, you know, odd and a little bit challengeable also as well. Useless way of passing the time, he says. So while it has a permanent attributes, it also constantly changing and adapting to new needs, new demands and new circumstances. So could you please jot it down, these three words, new needs, new demands, new circumstances. So a lot of educationists have given for put forward their ideas in these three categories. They might have just used another word like environment, culture and all. But still, still new needs, new demands, new circumstances. These are the key points. Right? So that's for your use, it's important, these two uh, couple of uh, words. J.B. Conan, he says, education changes not only from country to country, from culture to culture, but also from time to time. Now, once you just flash back even, you can well understand your education, how you learn, and how your parents learn, and probably uh, here, you know, mother's parents, I don't know, that how your little ones are just educating themselves. So it depends on the time also. And culture, of course, being Sri Lankans, we all are, whether we are Muslims or Sinhalese or Buddhists, we all are Sri Lankan. In such a culture, more or less the same, the same idea in Sri Lanka, you know. But once you just go back to the changes, of course, development of the technology. You know, we never thought like hmm, there would be something like online. You can well understand in the Corona period, Corona time. Though we like it or not, we had to give the chance, everybody, I mean the little ones, to use the cellular phone, mobile phones. So once again, we are just prohibiting now. But for the time period, we are the people who just let those people to use the mobile phone. Everybody should just buy some or other. By hook or crook, you have to buy what? The mobile phones. That is how we just told them. Why? It depends on the time. We never used mobile phones. So I, I wonder whether what would happen in the next decades and couple of decades, maybe like after two, three decades, what would happen to Sri Lankan education system? Probably the entire, what you call that, the books and all, probably may be abolished. Instead, there would be only online, maybe only computers, laptops and iPhone and all. So depends on the time, depends on the culture, depends on the, you know, cultures and the time special. That's what J.B. Conan says. Education changes not only from country to country, from culture to culture, but also time to time also. So that line is important. You better just put it down, note it down. Then and there, when, when there is something like important, you better just jot it. At least you, you can just uh, uh, jot it down, just note down the name of the person that you can go for the internet and you can uh, browse the internet and get those ideas, definitions. No need of uh, each and everybody to be copied. But if you really feel like you have to get the short note, you are free to do it. Agrabal. So main, main factors are, you know, forward. Differences in individuals' personalities. That also differ. Difference in the environment. Education depends on all those things. Differences about life. Differences in education theories and practices. These are also basic things as Agrabal presented. These are well-known educations for the philosophers. So we have to admit all those words and the definitions. So as I just earlier told you, but they are sent a cut and dry answer, cut and dry, you know, for the figure, a definition. No, there isn't such a thing. Depends, no? Even for the methods and all, 
that's why the people see it is eclectic rather than confined one methodology it is eclectic eclectic mean what eclectic mean depends on the person's methodology methods my way of thinking my way of presenting my way of teaching is completely different from you eclectic so like that i think differences uh, in the education theories and practices are also important according to adverb Uh, am I fast? Too fast? Is it okay? You could acquire what I am just speaking here. Is it okay, my dear? Yeah, fine, sir. Okay, thank you very much. The word education is so derived from Latin. Educare means to lead out. These are, you know, Latin words. With Latin, earlier, Latin was the origin. Of all the you know, like academic work was done in Latin. So it was like you know worshiping language, although people don't care about now Latin. So that was the you know all those things derived from Latin. Most of the words in English even as you know, yeah, Latin. Lead out, bring forth. You have to put forward certain things. Bring forth. So students' knowledge, understanding, and aptitudes are nurtured. But to nurture them, not the nature, but the nurture. You have to give full support. Educare means, once again, upbringing or taking the essence out. If you are able to get the essence out of that particular thing, that's educare. Educo means directing out, education. So directing out. So directing out, upbringing, taking the essence. So all those words are very important for you to understand. Lead out, bring forth, all those words are containing in this particular thing. So all those definitions or the short ideas are comprising in this particular word education. So education is an umbrella term, you know. It's a very big umbrella term where all those Small things could be occupied, could be accommodated in this particular thing, education. Right. We'll go to the next one. Describe the nature and need of the education process with the philosophical definitions. Once you look at the definitions uh, accepted worldwide, there are two uh, kind of Two major branches of definitions. There is Eastern and Western. Even in your syllabus, there are these two things are always advocated: Eastern as well as Western definitions. Okay, so we'll go to first for the Western philosophy or Western definitions on education. So once you look at that now, Western, you have to go to the Greek once again. Greece, Greek. So they are Aristotle, Plato, and the best, the first one, Socrates, or Socrates, you call it. Socrates is the first one. So from there, of course, you get ample. This is the origin, you know, accepted origin. Probably that there were earlier, more than, but this is academically what we uh, say is. That is the origin of uh, education is coming from Socrates. He's the father of philosophy. We call philosophy. Philo. Sophia. That word is also very important. Is that so? Sophia. Sophia means wisdom. Philo means love. Love the wisdom. So he's the one that who introduced all those things. Philosophy. Even you, are, you and I, we all are learning, we all are teaching, we all are in, in the academic field, you know, very many people. But because of this person, Socrates, the father of modern education. Why modern education? Yeah, probably beforehand, before that also, probably there might be, there might have been some, you know, kind of uh, education, but it was not called education. 
So I think uh, Socrates is the person there who started in a formal way, right? So we must first admit our ignorance and realize there's a world of knowledge ready to be accessed. See that now? We should accept that we don't know anything. He's the one who just told it. We must first admit our ignorance. You know the word ignorance is a simple word. Ignorance, yeah, and education. Our foolishness and realize there's a world of knowledge ready to be accessed. Ample of words, ample of sentences, ample of no uh, knowledge. We call it epistemology, available everywhere. We are here to find and get this, you know, knowledge, epistemology. So knowledge is ready to be accessed. So it's up to you too. But beforehand, you should understand that you are zero. Ignorant. You have to admit it. We don't know. If you don't, if you admit only that I don't know, that you can acquire something, absorb something from somebody. You know? That's the thing. If you think I am a pundit and I know everything, each and everything, nobody is going to teach me. So then problem. So Socrates, this statement is, you know, you can apply even to myself, by myself, even to yourself. How many things are there available in the society that we don't know? Frankly, tell me, I know next to nothing about these digital things. So mobile phone and all. When there's a problem, I always ask my little ones, daughters and sons. You, I don't know anything. Comparatively, I'm talking. Yeah, this is the thing. So, like that, knowledge is available. I, I know my, you know, this subject only. But you may know more than me about your subject. Maybe math teachers are here. Maybe Tamil teachers are here. Oh, I don't know. So, so you know that we should be humble enough to acquire. The father of modern education says what? We must first admit our ignorance and realize there is a world of knowledge ready to be accessed. See that now? This is something BC, before Christ, you know, earlier time, not AD, Anno Domino, but before Christ, it was told. This, this, this thing is very important. Is that so? This is something like a heart touching sentence. He's the one who told it. <laughs> Education is the kindling of a flame. Not the feeling of a wizard. Can anyone just share with me this metaphorical idea hidden here? Yeah, please. Somebody will explain it all. Like, you know, it's not explain, like, you know, like sharing your ideas. That's better, I think. Anybody here? Yeah, it is the kindling of a flame. Kindling of flame, not the feeling of a vessel. Yeah, share your ideas, please. I have about thirty people are here. Right, that's good. Uh, education ideally was. Uh collaborative process in which the uh, instructor draws out ideas uh, or as in conversation with the students rather than simply lecturing with them? Sure. Exactly right. Um, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Miss. Any other idea? Yeah. Any other idea, please? One more. According to the psychologist, uh, sure. students are not the empty vessels. Uh -huh. So, have uh, uh, their hidden talents, skills. So as the teacher, in educa through education, we should uh, sharp their talents, skill, and knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, not to uh, filling the empty vessel. Yeah, exactly. Okay, thank you very much, please. Thank you. Uh, may I just give you one, one more chance to somebody? The last chance. 
uh, education is a collaborative process uh, where the instructor or the teacher is giving the opportunity for the student rather than giving a lecturing okay a simple lecture okay thank you very much thank you very much now here yeah i agree with you all three right education is the kindling of a flame not the feeling of a vision the i just more give attention for the last uh, you know that you have already you know you have been taught something like psychology and all philosophy and maybe like that you have the stuff uh, in the education so that you have already uh, given me the same thing that's good i i agree with you but what i just told you is the metaphorical idea in the sense like hmm? the first impression what i just got from there it's a very genuine idea you know not the feeling of a vessel what happen once you just feel the vessel now for example this one once you just there's a little bit to be you know feel it once you just feel this particular thing up to the, this level you can't feel it more that's the idea so education is such but not that like that not the feeling of a vessel education is the kindling of a flame once you just kindle the flame spreading you can ample of you know you can um, with ample of people that you can uh, share the so education is such you can share your knowledge with everybody but you will lack nothing you will lack nothing you know i i can understand still i can remember one example uh, experience frankly tell you i'm genuine uh, with you people i know your education huh? you all are teachers i'm also teacher here Although I'm a lecturer, we all are teachers. Somebody, you know, from uh, I may not give you the phrase. That's not good. Uh, somebody asked me, like a little one from very, uh, you know, Anuradhapur Samya. I'm from Nigambo, right? So asked me over the phone, sir, could you please send me some biology notes? especially biology papers question papers could you please get some print out then i am just so i am ready to pay you i had never seen the velo even the little one then i asked one of my lecturers the staff he has a daughter she is going to sit for the a level she is from kandy So I was working in Kandy. Those days, where are they? Then she told me, "I'm so so merry. I can't disturb my daughter." Then I asked, "What? Disturbing daughter? You know? No, she is in another room. I can't disturb even for a while." Yes, Now what I'm just going to tell you is, not kindling a flame. Not sharing the knowledge, but they are like filled vessels. Ultimately, another lecturer just came forward and yeah, did it everything and posted that the whole whole stuff to that particular fellow. That much of selfish we are, modern society. We are not ready to share even a note with somebody. Why? He also might pass. She also might pass. that much of selfish society is this so this this particular sentence is the statement is exactly applied to the modern society in sri lanka education is kindling of a flame not the feeling of a vessel okay the socrates believes that a teacher or an educator is one who possesses the skill to make people find good virtue so those thing two three things are very important fine and good in virtue fine and good in virtue this is very important that's how we just give more attention to those three but the cognitive domain the attitudes affective domain and the psychomotor here i think socrates is talking about the affective domain more here make people fine and good in virtue although you have phd if you lack virtue what could you do all the your double doctorate that you possess what the hell you can do if you are a person lack of virtues 
good qualities. So good qualities are concerned here. So these are the important things what Socrates told, not in the modern society, but earlier, even before Christ, we see. So educational success is to rouse people to be fine and good in human civic virtue. So if the education is education, the success of education means rousing people to be fine and good in human and civic virtue. Human qualities. If you are a good teacher, you are a person with good humanities. So if you possess really virtue that you are a teacher, good knowledgeable one. So I suppose the educationists, the teachers, the people, academic work, who are involved in the academic work should be equipped with all those things. At least that we should be humanities, you know, humanities and virtue should be equipped with us. Otherwise it's pointless. Whatever the PhD that you have, it's pointless. Unless that you have virtues, good qualities. So that is how the education means. Now this is the student of uh, Socrates, that's Plato. He's also one of the good philosophers and the his historical philosophers uh, who we really appreciate and admire according to our syllabus that was that we have. See that now? 429 to 384. BC. This word is important. What he told is the idealism. Ideal. Ideal society. Ideal individual. So idealism was in, uh, advocated. So somebody might have just told like the utopia also. I can remember the word utopia. Utopian society. Utopia. It's more or less the same word. But not Plato. But some other education is so some I, I have read in a book. Utopia, utopian society. You better just go to the refer the dictionary or the internet. U T O, utopian, P I A, utopian society. Idealism. Education consists of giving to the body and the soul all the perfection of which they are susceptible. So what Plato advocates is the play, what the perfection. Perfect person, Plato. It's a perfect uh, person, you know. No, in, in maybe are there English teachers here, like uh, literature, who are doing literature in this group? I don't think so. No, no, I don't think so. Okay. Right. Now Plato has, you know, in the in certain literature, I have. Uh, I have seen that. Man, woman, body. It's a man, woman, body. You go to the diction, uh, internet and see that now. That is the idealism. Man, woman, body in the same slide. One part is a man, the other part is a woman. It is pasted earlier. That is how Plato says. Somebody who may be suicide will remember now. Somebody has just divided that into two and it was separate and one is just searching the other. That's what we call it better half, other half. So the girl is searching for the boy. Man is searching for the woman, the ideal one. So idealism comes like that. Plato has uh, told those idealism, the man, woman, body. It is not directly relevant to your syllabus, but for your knowledge, I'm telling you. So even that, through that particular story also, what Plato uh, tries to tell you is what? Ideal body. So when man is not ideal, woman is not ideal, man, woman is the ideal. That's what in the family life also, even if a man, the husband is, uh, has already found the ideal woman, that's idealism, the family. That is the concept. It's biologically wrong, but the concept behind that is an uh, idea. Plato. So some or other, according to your syllabus, education consists of giving to the body and the soul all the perfection of which they are susceptible. Is it clear? All right. We'll go to the next one.
this, this, these things are very important for you. What Plato advocates is basic education. Basic education, like primary education today. Music, physical education, that's all. Music and physical education. Secondary education, <clears throat> science, maths, and logics. Now, this system was education system was up to 55 years, not up to A level. So, formal education started at the age of 56 years. Now, this is what Plato said. Of course, we are advocating today in Sri Lanka. Six years is the formal education we start. Who introduced this? Plato. See that now? So there are certain things that we have already, even Sri Lankan syllabus, even Sri Lankan education system, we have already got obtained, grasped from very many philosophers, very many educationists. Not Sri Lanka, everywhere in the world. People are adapting from earlier, you know, people. They are philosophers, philosophies, their ideas and all. So what are the methods? Play method, imitation. What teacher imitates should be followed by the teacher, the student. Music, storytelling, drama. Even in our day-to-day -day life also, we are once you are just teaching this. We have, is that so? Like role play dialogue and all. Mini dramas, the people are just coming forward and presenting the little ones, the students. So these are, you know, derived from those days. Even earlier, it was introduced. Right. How this education system was influenced by Plato's principles? Could you please write down these words? So we all have already, you know, taken those words from Plato's, you know, that ideas, idealism. Even today, we have the child-centered education. People are always advocating and telling everywhere in Sri Lanka, child-centered, child-centered. See that now? Plato is the one who introduced. Like long education. These are very popular words in Sri Lanka. Moral education. Family-based community education. Equal education for the girls as well as the boys. Compulsory education. Responsibility of education in the state, state in the same the government. Spiritual development, character development, self-realization. So may I go to the next one now? In short, jot it down. Better for your knowledge. So these are derived from all those terms have been derived from Plato's education principles. Rousseau, even Aristotle also they are, but we don't uh, much uh, give, you know, in detail about those things. Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. Aristotle is the one who just really taught uh, Alexander the Great, King Alexander the Great, who was in India. Uh, he was also very important, but in your syllabus or oh, uh, this way, no? Sorry. Rousseau. Jean Jacques Rousseau. Plato is idealism. 
So these, these terms are very important for you. Plato, idealism. Rousseau, naturalism. So education is a development of the whole man. Holistic view once again, it's more or less the same like Plato's ideas. Education is a development of the whole man. Whole man, holistic view, perfect view, ideal view. Whole man. A child should grow according to the nature. So nature wants children to be children before they are men. So children to be children. So what Rousseau says is, let the children to behave as children, not as men. So we are the people doing it, is that so? Yes. Child has ways of seeing, thinking, and feeling peculiar to itself. And nothing can be more foolish than a substitute of ways to them. So look at this now. That's what I'm telling you. A child is not a small adult. Child is not a small adult. Now, this is what Rousseau says. There are four stages. Infancy from birth to two years. Birth to two years. That's infancy. Categorizing. Childhood me two years to twelve years. Adolescence me twelve years to fifteen years. So, human, that's a man, over 20 years. Even 15 now, after 15 and all, also same youth and a man. Youthhood and the man, after 20 years. So, Rousseau also advocates this idea, what? Child-centered education. <laughs> He's giving alternative teachers to zone. Various media, observation, exploration, traveling and all. Not only the lecture method. So lecturing is good. For the androgogy. Androgogy learning in the sense like for you like, you know. So I'm just lecturing you since that you are adults. But lecturing is not advocated for the little ones. So Rousseau advocates Various media, observation, exploration, you just go to the water. If you want to find out the low tide, high tide of the river or the sea, you better just go to that particular place and touch it and get the first hand experience. That's Rousseau's method. Naturalism. From a faraway place that you look at the mountain and say, Climbing mountain or the hike is very hard. No, you have to go. You get the experience and you understand, you educate yourself how it is. Exploration, traveling. So that's all. So design curriculum based on student interests, desires, and skills. Even the curriculum, you know, unlike Sri Lanka, I said so. Though we like it or not, that we have to teach those people something like the bad stuff. But this curriculum design is taken place according to the student's interest. If students don't like that kind of thing, majority, you neglect that from the syllabus. You definitely, you know, remove that part. So that's our design curriculum is based on the taste of the little ones. So competency-based learning. You know this uh, Rousseau, if Rousseau were in Sri Lanka, you know, he would be in a big problem. 
Why? Dissuade corporal punishment. No. You are not supposed to hit anybody with your cane. Never. So that's what. Yeah. Competency based. You know that uh, I don't know about these things. You better just ask from your campus uh, uh, in charge, lecturers and all, uh, assessment and all. PLC, this person's paper. Forget about your uh, assessment. Now give more attention to the question. <laughs> Competency based learning. Dissuade, you know, dissuade corporal punishment. You are not persuading. You are dissuading corporal punishment. Corporal punishment in the sense, physically you are hitting the bellow. Punish, punishment. More attention for individual learning. Nature alone is the source of all knowledge, learning through experience. Marx, Marxism, it is called, now for example, I told you, no, idealism, naturalism, this is Marxism. It should be the responsibility of the state. Religious influence on education should be avoided. Religious influence on education should be avoided. That is how Marx look at this. It's a compulsory education. Education is compulsory for everybody. Education should not depend on class differences. Education should be integrated with the world of work. That's very important. World of work. World of work is very important, right? Even today, in Sri Lankan education system, people are just talking about the world of work. That is how the technology, technological subject was introduced because of the world of work. So these are the, you know, age limitations. If you are 9 to 12 years student, you should work 2 hours. If you are one between 13 and 14 years, well, four years or four hours you have to work. Working, right? Maybe in the paddy field, maybe somewhere in a factory. Wow. Practical. 14 to 17 should be work for six hours. So that, that uh, the harvest of activities also benefited to the school as well and to the individual. So that you are from the very uh, early years, early age years. You have the tendency to work. That's, I think, a very good uh, methodology, you know. There are maybe like, uh, you know, who did the science for your A-level and all. Ah, uh, Nalaka Prasad, sir. Hello. Nalaka Prasad. Hello, sir. Uh, could you please, uh, because your microphone is on, I suppose. Hello, sir. It's not clear here. Yeah, something disturbed. You know, some somebody who not you. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Yes, very sorry, sir. Ah, now okay. I love. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, we, we do mistakes like that. Even I myself also did once. It's okay. Don't worry. Yes, sir. Hurriedly I came, sir. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. It's okay. Very sorry. Sir. Yes. Sir. Now, uh, that's Marxism.
uh, you know, uh, education should not be depend on the class differences. And uh, look at this next one. Education should be integrated with the world of work. So world of work is very important. But what I just uh, was talking about you is hmm, there are ample of people who know all the you know circuits and all the things theory regarding the electricity. So V equal IR and all. They know the formula. They know how to do the you know how the how the bulbs are switched on. And all like, academically. But the problem is once you have a power cut or whatever it is, a problem with the fuse or the main switch in your house, the, the very person might ask from the nearby, you know, very simple fellow electrician who really passed like wave four to do this work. It's very ironical. The person who did physics regarding the circuit, regarding the electricity, invite a nearby or neighboring laborer who really passed grade 5 to do the work in your house. But you are the one who did it all the circuits in the A level and you pass and physics and you are in the university now. That, that's the problem is not you. Not with the particular labor, but the education system. That's what I'm telling you. So even everybody are the same. So world of work is very important. That is Karl Marx advocated that one. So probably that uh, in Sri Lankan system, education system, and most of India, they might have just got this idea from Marxism. Right. Education should produce a fully developed individual. Once again, Marx is also equal education opportunity should be given for everyone. Separate education from the church. Complete development of body mind. Every child should participate in the production of goods. Man must be saved from dehumanization. You know, even today, that we we are just we are overhearing certain tragedies. A couple of days before that, we uh, listen. I mean, we watch the TV mission news and all from Canada. The nasty incident, dehumanization. So, forget about the human world, you know, it's pathetic. Dehumanization is a big problem. So, that's what Marx is. Man must be saved from dehumanization. So, if you are a good teacher, if you are a good individual, if you are an educationist, if you are an academic work person, you should be equipped with the humanized human qualities, humanity. So all the educationists are telling the same thing. That's what in your syllabus that you are talking about the affective domain now. Cognition, psychomotor as well as the affective domain. So the affective domain is the most you know important part, but pathetically it is a very poor part that we all are neglecting. As teachers, as lecturers, as the universities, universities, everywhere, on earth. This is also very, very important for your exam and for your syllabus. John Dewey. Really exciting. Thing. 
Education is the development of those capacities in the individual, which will enable him to control his environment and fulfill his responsibilities. Education is the development of those capacities, which will enable him to control. Education is the development of those capacities in the individual which will enable him to control his environment and fulfill his responsibilities. So don't do we what he says is control his environment. You should be able to, the little one should be able to do it. And not only controlling, but fulfilling his responsibilities. So both should be there. Enable to control his environment as well as fulfilling his responsibilities. So that's what you call it a responsibility and accountability. You are accountable for that one. Accountability. The child. Starting point, the center and the end. So without the particular word child or the concept or the man, the human being, no education. That's what this is center and the end. His development, his growth is the ideal. It alone is the standard. So there are no predetermined names in education. You can't determine earlier. No aim such, according to John Dewey. It's a continuous process. Constantly, it's going on. It's a continuous process. No ending. Never ending process. It keeps on going. So, education is progression forward by reconstructing the previous experiences. You get the experience and you do something and you are in a failure, probably you are in a success, some or other whatever it is plus or minus, you get this idea and go ahead. So next one, education is not preparing for life but for living. Very important, is that so? It's, it's you know, playing words. Not preparing for life, but for living. So today, Sri Lanka, of course, education is for the life, not for living. Is that so? So all those things, what we just do is for the life. But for not living. So that's, a, you know, playing with the words. Life is, it is a little bit more materialism. Materialistic things. Living is more spiritualism, I suppose. You are working, you are living. You become down to earth once you are living. But life is something what you really want is the materialistic world. So you model, you know, I commodify yourself. Commodification, commodify is very important. So the commodity is the goods. And all those things are important. Not the virtues, but the goods, but the goods. That's life. So he advocates education is not preparing for life means not to lead a luxurious life or to collect, accumulate a lot of goods and commodities. But for living. That does not mean that you should not lead a luxurious life, but for living. Edu education should be child centered once again. See that too? John Dewey also tells the same thing. More or less the same. Everybody is talking about child centered quality. Freedom should be based on activity. So, project method is also important here. Group learning.
Bertram Russell, another educationist. is labeled as English thinker. Education is a process through which a person's development is fostered. His cultural heritage is transmitted and useful citizen is produced. Cultural heritage is transmitted and a useful citizen is produced. Once you do it, education is the process through which a person's development is fostered. So the idea. Right. Tago, a tago. Ravindranath Tago or Tago. So Indian. He's an artist, philosopher. Most of the people know him as a musician, is that so? An artist. Ravindranath Tago. But uh, Nobody is, you know, bothered about whether it is an educationist. Yeah, he's an educationist. Once again, it's a very ironical sentence. Education should make a man and not manufacture a man. Huh. So, because now we are like educated, producing children, manufactured for the factory. We are producing the outcome. Manufacturing students, manufacturing people with knowledge, this and that and everything, O level, A level, and all the exams. Manufacturing individual with exams, exam oriented manufacture, factories, we all love, including myself. That's not the fault with I and you. Once again, it is a problem with the education system. So what uh, Ravindranath Tagore say, uh, tells is, if it is education, it should make a man. Man. Once again, man, the word man should be defined in a better way. Not manufacture a man. Good idea, I think. It is stated that it should be a balanced one. That is the man. How do you define the word man? Now make a man, making a man mean balanced personality, balanced one. And also one which can enable the man's physical, social, cultural, cognitive, and moral development. You know, the, we are, uh, the problem is lack of personality today, lack of a balanced personality. The ample of, you know, news. No need of telling each and everything here. You might not, you might mean, you know me, I mean, no more than me, myself, right? Henry Bagravel shows that the real objective of education should be to allow the person's mind to function fully. Earlier also, we advocated that Agravel. Functions freely. Montessori. If Mario Montessori were in Sri Lanka, it would be the disastrous moment to Montessori. Mario Montessori would be taught by the Sri Lankan Montessori teachers sooner. What should be Montessori method? You know, our preschool teachers in Sri Lanka is higher than Mario Montessori, the original lady. Nobody knows what is Montessori method. It's a uh, pathetic, especially in Sri Lanka. Montessori method coming from this lady, Maria Montessori, introduced education for pre-childhood. What she says is, enjoy the games, paying attention to the basic education given at a family. So more attention to the family. Education coming from the family. The socialization and all those things derive from family. First, then the preschool. What do you do? Preschool. Enjoy the games. Play, play method. Teacher should facilitate the child's free behavior. You see now. 
child's free behavior should be facilitated by the teacher, not to disturb. The teacher, he or she, she should be vigilant. Look at those things. And the teacher should be a facilitator. We are important, where it is necessary, you just go and help. That's all. Otherwise, you'll be just an individual in the ground. Or wherever. It's not done. It's a competition in Sri Lanka. Why? We are manufacturing preschool little ones, not making. Child's classroom should be a pleasant place. Unnecessary help is a hindrance to child's development. If you are helping too much, that is also you are disturbing the little one. Unnecessary help is a hindrance, not a help. You are disturbing his personality. That is what Mari Montessori says. Let the person to grow. Let the person to develop his personality. You are disturbing, you are helping me, you are disturbing. See that now? Uh, where we are now? Paulo Freire. Paulo Freire is also a good educationist. Conscientization. So, conscience. It should be something according to your conscience you Banking concept of education. Last sentence is very important. Is that so? Paulo Freire. Read not only books, but also read the world too. Because now in Sri Lankan education system, we don't have time to read the world. We are reading books only. Exam oriented things. We know all the things, but we don't understand that. Somebody is, uh, I just uh, saw the video, somebody is, you know, lecturing how to be patient. Something like a discussion, I don't know. I don't know exactly. To be patient. The topic is patient. Patience. Ultimately, when the audience asks questions from him, he becomes impatient. He lacks his patience. So the, the individual who speaks does not have the patience, although he is talking based on the patience. So like that. Why? The problem, problem maybe read the world is not there but only books. So we are in a bookish learners. We are really, we call the, we are labeled as bookish learners. Is that so? Bookish learners in the sense, we are, we, our education always confined to the books, nothing else. So I think uh, we should go beyond the books. We should be very down to it. We should be very genuine. We should not pretend. He said so. Once you pretend only that you have to maintain every day the pretension. So the entire, I'm so sorry to take all the things from Sri Lanka because we are behind Sri Lanka. Most of the things in Sri Lanka is pretension, I think. Even in the education system. So what uh, Paulo Freire says, Read not only the books, but also read the world too. If you are an individual, if you are an individual who really reads the world, I think you are in the right track. That does not mean that don't read the books. Well, reading books is very important. In the digital books, e-books and all. But coincidentally, you should read the world too. You, you should just teach the little ones to read the world too. That's very important, right? Yes. 
we talked about Paulo Freire and all from the Aristotle, Socrates, all those people are from this day. So Eastern philosophies are also there. Uh, once in a way, Lord Buddha is also uh, uh, like a philosopher, like philosophy, is that so? But I think uh, your syllabus is not there. Mahatma Gandhi. By education, I mean an all round growing out of the best in the child, a man, body, mind, and spirit. Body, mind, and the spirit. There are three H, I think. Three H. We call it three H method. Head, heart, and the hand. Body, mind, and the spirit. Head, heart, and the hand. Three H. So, Mahatma Gandhi is the first one who introduced these three. All round rolling out of the best in child. So, 3H method. Three main principles. Intellectual training. Spiritual training. Physical training. If uh, education the concept of education should consist of intellectual, that means the cognition. Cognitive development should be there, but that's not good. Spiritual training, affective domain. Physical training, psychomotor domain is advocated there. So everybody is talking about these three. 3H, three head, heart and the hand. Intellectual, cognition, spiritual, Affective, physical, psychomotor. So it's a combination of all those things. Emotionally balanced personality should be there, apart from all those things. Here the words are also here. Head, the heart, and the hand. So developing of all those three is important. If you are intellectual and if you lack the heart part, then problem comes. Although you have the head and the heart, if you are, you know, sort of low level regarding your hand, it's once again it's a failure. So that's a equally these three more all the three are important. So Mahatma Gandhi says primary education is compulsory for all. Education should be based on a handicap. Self-discipline should be internalized by education. You know, this is very important. What Mahatma Gandhi says is, not because somebody is supervising us, not because some, somebody is vigilant on us. So according to our concerns, we have to do our duty. Not only the teachers, but we have to teach those ideas to the little ones as well. We adults, responsibility. Self-discipline. Not because of somebody is punishing you. Not because somebody is observing you. But you do according to the, your concerns. So I think that's very important to give this idea to the little ones. Education should be given in the mother tongue. Mahatma Gandhi advocates that also. He didn't agree with, you know, early childhood, another language, early childhood. But he advocates the mother tongue should be advocated early, like childhood, maybe like Montessori guys, preschool. Then you let the person to acquire. The language, the second language, maybe English, maybe Spanish, French, or whatever it is. But the 
in Sri Lankan context, maybe Tamil, maybe Sinhala, the others may be English even. Yeah, education should not be given by force. Mahatma Gandhi's idea should not be given by force. If it is given by force, then problems come. So spont spontaneously, automatically, it should go. Right? I think you all have understood. And also, if you have any other thing to be clarified, you can ask. At the same time, I suppose that you can, you know, ample of things are available in the internet. Even I myself, uh, you know, took from the internet most of the things to share with you people. So you better just go to the internet and find out more facts, right? Nyerere, Julius Nyerere is from Tanzania. Once he was a Tanzania president. Tanzania. Eastern. Introduce education system suitable for a self-sufficient rural agricultural economy. So agriculture was in Tanzania mostly. Self-sufficient rural agricultural economy was there. He anticipated the Africanization of education. <clears throat> so the because the colonization people, you know, English people, England, Englishmen, English women. They really wanted to make everybody English, especially the education. So he said, <coughs> no, no. <coughs> Our education should be Africanization. It should something our genuine language. You know, this is very important, I think, according to their culture. <clears throat> we Sri Lankans, we don't have our culture. Is that so? You know, we are like mixed. We don't have a separate, you know, identity in our culture or in our education. Julius Nyerere questioned that. He really questioned Tanzanian people. Africanization came in that way. Criticize the prevailing school system, which is under the coverage of English, English medium and all. Education should be for self reliance. Downplayed the capitalistic competition in the school by the Arusha Declaration of 1916. This were this Arusha Declaration of 1967. That's better jot it down. This word Arusha Declaration of 1967. It was introduced by Tanzanian President Julius Nyerere. Arusha Declaration. Right. Introduce different stages of education. Julius Nyerere also talking about those things. Preschool, primary school, secondary education, higher education. So these were the, you know, things advocated. Mao Setu, China, Chinese. Maoism, Maoism, you call it. Model of grafting Western knowledge and ideas of the classical Chinese system. He 
he advocates some qualities of Western as well. Distant learning judged to be science and military superiority, the first modern schools were established. Military superiority was introduced to school system. So when you look at the whole thing, whole stuff, maybe Eastern, maybe Western, there are common facts where education is. I told you at the early morning, uh, early once we just started the lecture, even the methods and all those things are eclectic. And there's a cut and dry answer for the education or the definition. What is edu education? Many people are just forwarding different ideas regarding education. So what at the moment what we have to do is we have to find out common facts on education. Out of the whole thing, what I just discussed today, then and there you can grasp certain things and make a common, you know, common uh, ideal items. If it is education, these, 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 these should be containing there. Simply these are the things. Dynamic nature, a lifelong process. Achieved through various modes. Changes according to time and country. Everyone always obtains from everywhere, every day. Achieves from various sources. Consists of both learning and teaching. Considering as a process. It's a continuous process. So these are very famous, attractive sayings. Rig Veda. See that now? BC 3500. 3, Even before Aristotle and Socrates and all. Rig Veda. Noble thoughts coming from every side. Jirvedi, your Jirvedi, perform noble deeds, develop intellect and purify human. Confucius, that's from China. Human heartedness is the highest value an individual can attain and this is the ultimate value of education. Upanishad. Leading from the unreal to the real. From darkness to the light, from death to the immorality. Immoral. You never die like, you know, immorality. I think uh, today's lecture is based on these uh, main ideas. So we have already discussed about the Eastern. Western and how the Sri Lankan system and we are comparing and contrasting and we come to understand there isn't a dry cut and dry real definition for the education but even Sri Lankan today education system is a education system which comprises all the you know then and they are taking from Eastern as well as Western it's, it's a mixture of blend of everybody everything there are good points as well there are good points. Not only Sri Lanka, even any, any, any education system in any country. Uh, you can't advocate one person's system. It's an amalgamation of a amalgamation of lot of ideas. Is that so? Aristotle, in a nutshell. Attainment of happiness through perfect virtue. Perfect. Aristotle. Amos Comenius. Whole man. Holistic view. Can you remember? Holistic view we discussed. 
almost communists also talking the same thing. John Milton's idea. Pistolozzi is also a very important educationist. Education means the natural, progressive, and systematic development of all the powers. John Milton is an English poet and a good writer and educationist. I think Paradise Lost. That is his book. Poem. Very famous poem, Paradise Lost. Herbert Spencer. To prepare us for complete living is the function which education has to discharge. <clears throat> the realization of all the possibilities of human growth and development is education. Piaget. The second goal of education is to form minds which can be critical, can verify, and not accept everything they offer. Whatever people are offering, we, we are not supposed to take as it is. We have to logically think it. We have to argue and accept. That is what Gene Piaget says. Gene Krishnamurti and Radha Krishna. I told you now, it's a combination of a lot of ideas. <clears throat> so that's all today's lecture. I think you all have understood. Uh, it's a very simple thing. Definitions we have discussed today. And on education, how it comes like Eastern, Western and the Sri Lankan culture. And apart from that, we just discussed a lot of uh, educations and philosophers, uh, other than your, you know, exact syllabus, we discuss in, in detail. Is there any question from you? Anybody? Understood the lecture today, Kudala? Is it okay? What? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We understood. Right. Thank you very much. Yes, okay. sir. Right. Then we'll wind up the uh, lecture. Okay. Right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good thank night. you very much, sir. Good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Good night. Okay. <clears throat>